This is the Legal Hands to the Face podcast with Bill Calarulo. What's up, everybody? What's up? Welcome back to another Legal Hands to the Face podcast. As always, I'm your host, Bill Calarulo. The Philadelphia Eagles finally had a game against an opponent where we could see some of these guys go against NFL talent. And it was promising. I know the Philadelphia Eagles lose 20 to 19 to the Ravens. For some reason, the Ravens care so much about that preseason winning streak, which is just ridiculous to me. But besides that, some of the young players look good. I want to talk about that later. We'll also talk about who played and who didn't and what that could mean for their roles on this Philadelphia Eagles team. But before we get into it, guys, some housekeeping things. If you haven't already started to follow Jacob Sports on YouTube, that's J-A-K-I-B, get over to YouTube and give them a like and a subscribe. I've been hosting some shows on there. They're going to start live streaming this show every Monday night during the season. I co-hosted the post-game show following that first preseason game with Mark Farzetta, who's outstanding. We had special guests Derek Gunn, John McMullen, who was down at the stadium. I'm also going to be hosting their halftime show during the season live on YouTube and participating in their post-game shows. So be sure to head on over at J-A-K-I-B and give them a subscribe so you can keep up with all things Philadelphia Eagles. And if you're not already following Legal Hands to the Face on social media, although we update this podcast weekly, we are posting daily content to our social media channels. So get over to Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, Twitter, and Threads for daily content on the Philadelphia Eagles. But let's jump right into it. Let's take a look at that preseason game. I want to talk about some things. First off, the coordinators. Brian Johnson, new offensive coordinator. Sean Desai, new defensive coordinator. I know things are very, very vanilla in the preseason, so it's hard to tell exactly the type of schemes that they're going to be running, play calling, and things of that nature. But I thought there were some promising signs. It didn't look like, as far as on offense or defense, that there was any confusion, that there was any inability to get the play calls in. That's a big first step. One of the things with Brian Johnson, the offensive coordinator, is he's never called plays in the NFL. The last time he called plays was in college at the University of Florida. So it was good to see the offense look like they were clicking. And that's not an easy thing to do when you have all these young players on the offensive side of the ball. You didn't have Jalen Hurts. You didn't have any of your wide receivers. So the fact that the Brian Johnson was able to have his offense look like they knew what they were doing, look like the play calls were coming in quickly, that's a big sign. Same thing on the defensive side of the ball with Sean Desai. A lot of young players on the field, which we'll talk about in a second. Man, do their corners look deep. A lot of young guys. Howie Roseman did a great job replenishing the cornerback position. But they also looked like they knew what they were doing. The play calls were coming in. You didn't have N'Kobe Dean wearing the green dot. He didn't dress. So really promising signs from both coordinators there. And you like to see it. Let's hope that that can continue and these guys can continue to grow as well. But let's take a look at who dressed and who didn't. And I thought this was interesting. We know the emphasis that Nick Sirianni puts on keeping his players healthy, especially the starters and those that are going to have big contributions. So there was a few players who did not dress for this game. Let's start on the offensive side of the ball. And I was really surprised at the running back position. You didn't see Kenny Gainwell or Boston Scott. Neither one of those guys dressed. Now, I know they have been here before, so they know the offense But is that a sign that Gainwell and Scott both are locks to make this roster? Obviously, Kenny Gainwell is a lock to make this roster, but Boston Scott looks like he may be as well. I don't think the Eagles are going to keep five running backs. I think they're probably only going to keep four, and there's five guys vying for four spots. You have Kenny Gainwell and Boston Scott, DeAndre Swift, and then Rashad Penny and Trey Sermon. Well, DeAndre Swift does dress in this game. He gets two carries, and that is all we need to see from him. I don't care if we don't see from him again the rest of the season. Those two carries showed exactly what Eagles fans are so excited about, and that is DeAndre Swift's playmaking ability. You saw him make that quick move in the backfield, that big juke, makes the defender miss, and then turns on the burst and even lowers his shoulder to pick up the yards. That's a 22-yard run from DeAndre Swift, and then you didn't see him the rest of the game. Like I said, I'd be fine not seeing him the rest of the preseason. 
but DeAndre Swift looks great. So there's three running backs, Boston Scott, Kenny Gainwell, and DeAndre Swift. Who's going to be your fourth running back? I thought it was interesting. They gave Rashad Penny nine carries, and they gave Trey Sermon nine carries. These guys may be battling for that final position because they're both very similar in size. You look at the running back room, Kenny Gainwell, 5'9", 200. DeAndre Swift, 5'9", 208. And Boston Scott, 5'6", 203. So no big backs there. But Rashad Penny and Trey Sermon are your big backs. Rashad Penny's 5'11", 220. And Trey Sermon is 6 feet, 215. Are those guys battling for that final roster spot. I don't think Rashad Penny is a lock to make this roster. I know we're all hopeful that he can be the guy who averages 5.7 yards a carry, but he hasn't been able to stay healthy, and obviously the Eagles are aware of that. So is he going to be your fourth running back? They gave Rashad Penny nine carries. They gave Trey Sermon nine carries. Neither one of them really impressed me that much. I don't think either one separated themselves in that battle. Trey Sermon, nine carries for 21 yards. He only averaged 2.3 yards a carry. He did have a nice touchdown run down by the goal line, so some toughness in getting across the goal line there. And Rashad Penny, nine carries for 34 yards, 3.8 yards a carry. But like I said, neither one of those guys impressed me, so be on the lookout. They've had joint practices with the Cleveland Browns Monday and Tuesday this week. There's some more preseason games coming up, and I think you're going to have to see Rashad Penny and Trey Sermon really separate themselves to see who makes that team. Trey Sermon, I've said it all season, or excuse me, all off season. There was a reason why they kept him on the active roster last year. They didn't want to risk putting him on the practice squad and another team scooping him up. So there was a reason they kept him around. They obviously like him. You'd heard Nick Sirianni in the offseason single out Trey Sermon saying he's a guy that they want to see play this year. So that's an interesting battle at the running back position. Staying on the offensive side of the ball, going to the wide receiver core. No Quez Watkins. He had a hamstring injury. No Britton Covey. He was also held out for injury. But the surprising one for me was Alameda Zacchaeus does not dress in this game. New player comes over from the Atlanta Falcons, local kid from St. Joe's Prep. He's a guy I was excited to see maybe push Quez Watkins for some reps at that wide receiver three position. They don't even dress him for this preseason game. You don't know, is that just because they knew he was going to have to have a lot of reps in joint practices this week with Quez Watkins and Britton Covey both out? But Alama De Zacchaeus also doesn't dress, which I think shows he's also a lock to make this team. So you have your four wide receivers there in A.J. Brown. Devontae Smith, Quez Watkins, and Alameda Zacchaeus, who is your fifth wide receiver? Because a lot of the young guys showed out. Tyree Cleveland, five catches for 68 yards. Greg Ward showed again. He's just so sure-handed. Five targets, and the guy has five catches for 53 yards. He just has great hands, is very, very reliable. And then some of the younger guys looked good as well. Nagata, not as impressive as he's been in training camp. But how many wide receivers are they going to keep? Because you figure they probably also have to keep Britton Covey as their return guy. Because we saw some crazy things with the return game. You had Trey Sermon returning kicks. He had two returns. And you had Greg Ward as your punt returner. And I think that's mainly because no Britton Covey, no Devontae Smith, and no Quez Watkins. They're going to be your guys who are going to return punts. At one point, they even had Zeke, Zach McPherson, I think, returning punts in that preseason game. But that's because the three punt returners, Covey, Smith, and Watkins, weren't dressed. Same thing for kick returns. You had Trey Sermon, who at first I'm thinking, man, are they really going to give this guy a chance to be a kick returner? But I think it was because no Boston Scott, no Britton Covey, no Kenny Gainwell, no Quez Watkins. Those guys will be getting your kick returns long before Trey Sermon. So – we will see how many wide receivers they're going to keep, but some promising things from some young guys there. Let's jump over to the defensive side of the ball again to take a look at who didn't dress in this game and what that could mean for who's locks to be starters on this team. Well, you first look at the safety position. Reed Blankenship, it's amazing he goes from an undrafted rookie last year to the guy is not even dressing for preseason games. He is locked in as your starting safety. 
I want to talk about the other starting safety in a second because a young guy really, really impressed. But jumping down to the linebacker position, no N'Kobe Dean. It's hard to say whether or not N'Kobe Dean would have dressed for this game if he didn't have that ankle injury. But he doesn't dress either. So you saw all of your linebackers, Nicholas Morrow, Christian Ellis, Miles Jack, Zach Cunningham, all vying for positions. All of those guys do dress in this game. None of them necessarily stood out. I did like how fast Christian Ellis plays. You saw it on that play, that toss to the outside. He was like lightning. Read the play, flew over to it, does miss the tackle, but I was okay with it. He misses the tackle by turning the player back inside. That's what you want to do there. You know you have help on the inside. You just don't want to miss the tackle and allow the running back to get on the outside there. He does a great job of cutting off the, the outside lane, forcing the running back to turn back, and then the Eagles make the play. So you saw how fast Christian Ellis plays. And – at the defensive line position, not a surprise. You don't see Hassan Reddick or Fletcher Cox or Brandon Graham, but some of the young guys played. So let's get right into the young players, man, because it was exciting to see Jalen Carter. Everything you've heard about Jalen Carter in training camp is how good this guy looks. Well, it doesn't take long for us to see it right away in his first preseason game, his first snap. He's so quick off the ball and so strong, throws the guard out of the way like he was nothing and puts pressure on the quarterback immediately. First snap in the NFL, and he gets a quarterback hit. That guy looks like he's going to be able to contribute in a big way this season. You also saw Nolan Smith on the outside. Didn't do anything too impressive, but you could see his athleticism and speed. He did have a quarterback hit. In fact, the Eagles only had two quarterback hits in this game, and they came from Jalen Carter and Nolan Smith. So two guys who you think are probably really going to contribute this year for that defense. Really good to see. But jump into the linebacker position. Like I said, Christian Ellis impressed me a little bit. Nicholas Morrow didn't stand out necessarily, but didn't make any big mistakes either. So we'll see. They're obviously battling for that position. And then you had Miles Jack and Zach Cunningham get in there in the second half. Again, nobody really jumped off the page, but no big mistakes either. So hopefully you're going to have linebackers that are just going to be solid, not necessarily huge playmakers, but we'll see what N'Kobe Dean looks like when he gets in there. But it's the safety position that had me so excited. Sidney Brown, the third-round pick out of Illinois that everyone was hopeful was going to be able to run with that starting position next to Reed Blankenship back there at safety. In his first NFL action, Looked like he belonged. Led the team in tackles. He had nine solo tackles. And whenever he was on the field, you saw him because he was flying around. And we knew he was that type of player. If you watched his tape from Illinois, you knew he was the type of player that just flies around the field. Not that you're comparing him to two all-time greats, but he does have very similar traits to Troy Piamalo and Brian Dawkins with the way he flies around the field and throws his body around, and you saw it firsthand. The question was, was he going to be able to do this at the NFL level? Was he going to look lost out there? Now, take this with a grain of salt. Obviously, the Cleveland Browns, excuse me, the Baltimore Ravens in the preseason are keeping their offense pretty vanilla. They're not going to be doing any crazy things or game planning for that game against the Eagles. But even with that being said, Sidney Brown looked like he belonged on the NFL level. Very impressive stuff from Sidney Brown. And he was rewarded in the first practice, joint practice against the Cleveland Browns. They started giving Sidney Brown some first-team reps. So I loved what Nick Sirianni did with Sidney Brown. He comes in here, and he really had to earn his reps. They started him out on the third team. He then worked his way up to the second team. And now, after a strong performance in that preseason game, they're giving him some first-team reps. You also saw Terrell Edmonds, the safety they picked up from Pittsburgh. He looked okay as well. I think Sidney Brown has the potential to beat him out for that other safety position. But Terrell Edmonds is a solid starter. He's played a lot of games in this league. I don't think he's going to make any big, flashy plays for you. But hopefully, he doesn't make any big mistakes either. So that was interesting to see as well. So some real promising things from the Philadelphia Eagles in this game. And one thing became abundantly clear is how deep they are at the cornerback position. We all know they brought back James Bradbury, second-team All-Pro from last year. 
They brought back Darius Slay. They're locked in as your starting corners, and they still have Avante Maddox, who when he's healthy, and that's been a big if over the years, but when he's healthy, is one of the best slot corners in the NFL. You already have those three guys. But then behind them, man, they are deep. They have Zach McPherson. They have Josh Job, Josiah Scott. But they have these young guys. What a play by Eli Ricks. They used to call him Pick Six Ricks. He picks off the play. Beautiful read. Takes it to the house for a touchdown. Surprisingly, didn't get a taunting penalty. But a great play. They have Mario Goodwich. Yeah, Goodrich, excuse me. Mario Goodrich. They have Mika Gardner. So they are so deep at that corner position. Howie Roseman did a great job of replenishing that cornerback room. And hopefully you have guys waiting in the wings to take over with Slay and Bradbury getting up there in years. But we should be just fine at that cornerback position this coming year. Let's jump over a little bit to the offensive side of the ball. Another player who didn't dress, which really shouldn't be a surprise to anybody, is Cam Jurgens. He's your starting right guard. There was really never a battle there at all with Tyler Steen. In fact, Tyler Steen started at left tackle in this game, getting him some reps there. He did really well, Tyler Steen. I mean, obviously, he's only a rookie. You're going to have some mistakes out there. But I thought he had some really nice plays. Um, you know, So that was pretty good to see. And you looked at no Jalen Hurts. You're not going to play Jalen Hurts in this game, but you look at your other quarterbacks, Marcus Mariota, Tanner McKee, and Ian Book. Well, let's get Ian Book out of the way first. He looked very, very bad. We don't need to spend too much time on that. But Tanner McKee, a sixth-round rookie, drafted at 188th overall, played really, really well, impressed a lot of people. I don't think anybody was expecting him to make the throws he was making. He goes 10 of 20 for 148 yards a 74.6 rating, just looked like he had total command of that offense, was making some really, really tough throws. He got Tyree Cleveland the ball on a couple times. Cleveland went for five catches, 68 yards, so that was really good to see. And I know some people have been down on Mariota's performance. I was completely fine with Marcus Mariota's performance. It's a new offense he's learning. He was 7 of 11 for 58 yards. And he had four carries for 29 yards. But what I loved about Marcus Mariota is you could see it instantly that you're not going to have to change the offense drastically if for some reason Mariota has to come into the game if Jalen Hurts is out for a couple of plays. Mariota can run that zone read. He's able to pull the ball and take it around the outside. He still has that ability. Average 7.3 yards a carry in this game. That was something that we saw last year when when Hertz was hurt and Gardner Minshew came into the game. It really affected your running game because there was no threat that Minshew was going to pull that ball on the zone reads and take it around the outside, which allowed defenses to have their defensive end really crash down on the running back, and it really affected everything with that offense. You're not going to have that problem with Mariota. Mariota has the ability to pull that ball and run with it, which is going to help a lot of things with your offense. It's going to help your running game. So I think Mariota is your slotted in as your number two. With the rule change this year, teams can carry three quarterbacks. So you'll probably see Tanner McKee, who, man, a lot of people in training camp were saying Tanner McKee was not going to be your third quarterback, that it was going to be Ian Book. But at least after one preseason game, Tanner McKee looks like he is going to be just fine as your third quarterback. An issue I've been talking about all season is special teams. They really struggled last year on special teams. Bottom three, kickoff returns against. Bottom two, net punting yards. So let's hope that they're able to solidify that with some young players. But the one big negative from the game against the Ravens is they lose Sean Bradley to an Achilles injury. He is out for this season, and he is arguably your best special teams player. He has led the Eagles in special teams tackle over the last two years. So he is out for the year. You have to hope that some of these young guys that are that showed up and played well, these corners and safeties, that they're able to solidify that position. But there's also a punter battle between Aaron Sippus and Ty Zetner. Sippus had two punts for 75 yards, did pin them inside the 20 on a one occasion. And then Zetner had a punt for 46 yards, also pinned them inside the 20. But a little thing that may have gone unnoticed by a lot of people was Jake Elliott's missed field goal. Well, interestingly enough, Aaron Sippus, your punter, is your holder. The times he held on Jacob 
Elliot, or excuse me, Jake Elliott's field goals and extra points, Elliott makes them. The one time that they let Ty Zetner hold on that field goal, Elliott pushes it right, and you could see he had words for Zetner after the fact. He did not like the way he held that ball. That is going to factor in when you're looking at this punter battle because it is extremely important that your place kicker has confidence in who his holder is. So I think Aaron Sippas, just based off of that alone, is going to have the upper hand against Zetner as being your punter on this team. But we'll see how that all plays out in the weeks to come and some of these other preseason games. But overall, I thought it was an extremely promising first game for the Philadelphia Eagles. Obviously, their starters aren't playing, but these young guys really showed out. And we'll continue to see what happens in some of these position battles. Still a question mark as to who is your other linebacker next in the Kobe Dean? Who is your safety next to Reed Blankenship? And who's going to be your starting running backs on this team? Kenny Gainwell, locked to make the team. DeAndre Swift, a lock to make the team. But who are your other ones? Is it Boston Scott, Trey Sermon, Rashad Penny? So that's a big question mark. But you know, pretty much the Eagles are pretty solid. Not a lot of question marks on this team when you look at their roster. Offensive line, solid. Wide receivers, tight ends, solid. You know, the backup tight end is a position that is probably up for grabs. Is it going to be Jack Stoll? Is it going to be Grant Calcaterra? They did bring in Dan Arnold, who's had some success in the, in the league. Doesn't look great. I think you're probably going to see your three tight ends as Dallas Goddard, Jack Stoll, and Grant Calcaterra. Calcaterra can catch the ball. He struggled with blocking last year, but he looks like he put on some size. But that position's pretty solid. So really no question marks on your offense outside of the backup tight end. Who's your starting running back? Who's going to be your fourth or fifth wide receiver? So really solid going into the season. Let's hope they stay healthy. And then on the defensive side of the ball, the defensive line is just absolutely stacked. You have your secondary pretty solidified outside of that other safety position. And then linebacker, who plays next in the Kobe Dean? So really a lot of positives going into this season. Not a lot of drama, not a lot of question marks. Let's hope the Philadelphia Eagles can continue to play the way they played all year last year. And it's going to be important. We've talked about it before. That schedule gets really, really tough after the bye. It's important that the Eagles come out hot and win those games early. There's a lot of a lot of winnable games the first eight weeks of the year. So they need to really start stacking up the wins because things get really, really tough after the bye. And we know how important home field advantage is going to be for this Philadelphia Eagles team. Guys, that is going to be it for today. I am leaving for Italy in a few hours. So going on vacation for a few hours. May not have a podcast next Tuesday because I don't get back until Wednesday. But I'm going to still try to produce content for our social media pages every day like we always do. So be sure to check it out. Maybe just have a better backdrop. You may see some uh, beautiful scenery behind me on uh, the next few videos that we do. But I will keep following the Eagles. And guys, if you are following along on social media, be sure to engage, comment, send me messages, let me know things you want to talk about. And if you're feeling up to it, share, share, share. The more Philadelphia Eagles fans we could reach, the better. The support and growth over the last few months has been absolutely phenomenal. I can't thank you guys enough. We're going to continue, continue to continue bringing Eagles content every single day. And head on over to Jacob Sports because we've got a lot of fun things planned there as well. Working with Mark Farzetta has been great. The guy is an absolute pro. So head on over, give them a like, give them a follow, and even give them a share if you're feeling up to it. And as always, go Birds!